solo leveling anime is godly from Mostar. Let's see what he has to say. The solo leveling anime is here and it is so much beyond my expectations. It was okay. incredible. The animation looked pretty much flawless in this and they Cameraman, thank you. Played true to the beloved manhwa, which is a Korean manga called Solo Leveling. If you haven't read it, it's such a delight to read. It's just so much fun. And I was a little bit worried about how well they're going to be able to adapt it. The studio is A1 Pictures, who does Sword Art Online and Fairy Tale. But oh my gosh, I guess because this is a huge IP, it has a huge fan base, they went all out. I mean, look at some of these. I mean, they had like fucking seven or eight trailers leading up to this. I think for the promo and the advertisement, they did a fantastic job. Uh, and their commitment to this show is kind of I hope it's there right we're, we're gonna able to see it in the second half of the official episode one when we get to see the the shock and the twist but so far episode one it does look like they've given a lot of care and quality into this you know brand animations they are beautiful the artistic design is incredibly clean and thank the you for the raid was good everything about it was good I have zero complaints this is he has zero complaints the first content creator that we've seen a video from that said, that soul leveling episode actually had no problems. Because, like, every other video that we farmed has pretty much just been, like, bitching and complaining about... Well, they're not really bitching and complaining. The, the main thing that they're complaining is, which I also agree with, the fact that they just kind of stopped in the middle of nowhere. Actually, some people are even saying that episode one was a terrible hook. And if we just, like, stop glazing solo leveling and stop dick riding and actually think about whether or not episode one was a good enough hook for the casual person who has no idea what the show is, maybe it wasn't that good of a hook, right? Because they did a bunch of intro world building stuff, exposition, which is not the most interesting to the normies. And then they got into the double dungeon and then shit was about to pop off, but it didn't really pop off just yet. So I definitely do understand the criticism from some people saying episode one alone was not enough of a hook. And I think the criticism that it should have been like one one hour episode where the second portion of what we're going to see, which is going to be tomorrow, right? Episode two, which I still think should have been like a one hour premiere, you know, first episode. I think that's what's going to be the actual hook. So valid uh valid criticism in my opinion the new ultra hype anime i'm gonna they don't need a hook because you are a solo leveling enjoyer you guys in chat are fanatics about this series and even if you're not a fanatic you know what the series is about and it's gonna be so hyped that you will willingly watch it no matter what i'm talking about the most casual normie that has no idea what this show is they don't understand that this could be the power fantasy not an isekai but power fantasy show of this season or perhaps this year right with those kind of expectations we're willing to pretty much just you know it's fine if episode one wasn't as big of a hook but i'm just saying for like the most most casual normie person if they saw episode one would they be glazing this show just like us who've been farming all the trailers all the different video essays about this show i don't think so i'm gonna go through this episode and i'm gonna break it down for you and explain the series if you don't know it yet but wow guys i'm flabbergasted this is it this is so good without further ado i'm your host mastar please leave a like thumbs up and comment down below y'all know what to do go to the channel like this video sub to the channel let's see what, what he has to say though first first episode and how much you enjoyed it it helps me with the youtube algorithm and it promotes the channel more so the story of solo leveling takes place in a world very similar to one punch man you have different ranked heroes monsters that are invading magical weaponry and so forth basically 10 years ago these portals to other dimensions started popping up on earth and with these portals people started to awaken their isn't that weird? As soon as the portals show up, the humans also start to awaken and somehow the materials found in these dungeons can then be used to make better weapons and even like sustain energy on Earth. I feel like this is not a coincidence, right? Superpowers, their special abilities. Now, different than a lot of other stories, you actually cannot get any stronger in solo leveling. Unless you're the main character, where you apparently you can level. Once you awaken, you're given a rank, with E being the lowest and S rank being the highest, similar to- That's such bullshit, man. Like, literally, I mean, that's not so different from life, right? Pretty much your spawn point in life is the biggest determining factor on how much you'll thrive in the world. So these people here are pretty much just like given. They're just awakened into S rank or fucking D rank. That's just bullshit, man. It's all fucking RNG. The one punch man. And while you can't improve, you cannot upgrade, you cannot level up, you can buy magical weaponry to get stronger in that sense. So with higher levels. So you can buy, so you can improve and like hone your techniques, but 
how much can you really train your D rank magic skills, right? It's probably not going to be on a C rank, but you can still train and you can also get different, you know, items, I guess. Okay. ...of gear, better weapons and armor and artifacts. You can get stronger in that sense, but you yourself cannot increase your abilities anymore. That's interesting because maybe this implies that there are some characters which are in lower rank. Let's say a C class member that got a really bunch of OP gear and then suddenly he should be on the strength level of let's like a B class, but he'll officially still be, you know, C class, right? So maybe their power levels will be a little bit more obscured with the introduction of weapons and different gears and artifacts like that. Making the S rank heroes far superior than everyone else. And we can see this with the opening sequence as we see a bunch of hunters, which are the heroes of the story, taking on these ant monsters. Mm. They're getting completely decimated until the S rank heroes arrive and make that's right they were getting completely decimated until the s rank heroes arrived. that's exactly right and you can see mr guild master che here fucking flame alchemist is doing his shit takes the Beyond ants out look ant at this monsters boom and then you know what he does right after this he sends the fucking foot soldiers ahead to march to their fucking death what the fuck guild master you should have just more They're done more flame attacks decimated until the s rank heroes arrive and make easy work of these ant creatures so the world building in episode one is excellent the pacing mm -hmm. is excellent they lay out all of the plans for the world and the main character who we get introduced to in a little bit who is the weakest hero in the world the He's weakest e rank he always gets injured and he can't even really collect any of the magical items what was the point wait 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 i'm just i'm just like kind of usually i just zone out but why did he just go back to chahe and you know booty cr booty uh pov seed when he's just talking about jimu right now hold up always gets injured and he can't even really collect any of the magical items which they're all going into hunt for so that had nothing to do with what he was talking about but my man is gaming for the youtube algorithm right you're trying to improve engagement show the fun stuff to keep the kids engaged okay 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 as these heroes go through the portals and they defeat the dungeon they get all sorts of crystals and artifacts which work i'm not complaining they provide a clean power source far more clean than nuclear or any other source of energy so the main character sung jing Wu, as well as many of the other hunters this is their job this is the best way that they can make money and we learned in the first episode that sung the main character his mom is sick and he's trying to pay her hospital bills and so sister sister's got college main character is the weakest hero but he's got a big good heart he keeps fighting he keeps going in these dungeons and almost dying just so he can accrue a little bit of money to help support his family and the saddest and, and maybe the most pathetic or the saddest thing is the fact that the healer doesn't even need to be part of this party, right? Because it, it keeps being mentioned in other videos that they only had a healer for this because of Sung Jin Mu, right? And the healer Ji Woo, Ju He, I think, was like B class. So the guild association specifically sent out a healer, even though our party didn't need it because we're raiding such low rank dungeons that we could do it without a healer. The healer exists only to fucking heal this kid, which is so embarrassing to a point, right? So he goes into a D rank gate with a bunch of other hunters who essentially carry him. They, they go in these hunting parties and Sung, as well as the other weak hunters, they kind of tag along and get carried in the hopes that they can acquire a one little piece of weaponry or something. Right, because like some of the loot, the loot system is pretty much like participation based. So it's not like you did the most DPS, you get the most loot. It's not. It's like everybody that participated will get like an equal share. So my man is fucking leeching. Gems. So that they can get stronger but we see that sung in just a simple fight he's getting wrecked he gets stabbed and he would have died if it wasn't for another hunter healing him sung is the outcast and although the other hunters let him tag along they make lots of fun of him but he doesn't really seem to care about that too much his eye is on the prize and he's just trying to acquire anything that can make him some money so he can support his family and as the rest of the hunters clear out the dungeon they arrive at a boss door this massive scary looking boss I just, I'm just, wait, wait, where the fuck is this footage coming from? This is like episode two content. Maybe this is like episode two pra uh, tra uh, trailer, like PV. The boss door. This massive, scary looking boss door. These people have no idea what's in store for them. Well, they should have seen the door and immediately back the fuck off, right? This is from the trailers. Okay, okay, okay. It's not really spoilers. We're going to watch a two PV video from him tomorrow too. But as soon as you saw the boss gate, that's like 50 foot high. You should have been aware that this is nothing to fuck around with. And as soon as you enter the room, these blue torches start lighting up with gigantic night statues in the side. Like you should have known exactly what the, you know, the mission is. Get the fuck 
walk out survive but no they just want the money most portals are very cut and dry they're given a rank anywhere from e to s you go in you kill all the monsters there's a boss containing the best items you kill him and then you can leave the portal the but this is a double dungeon and double dungeons is so rare there's only been like one other instance where a small guild apparently cleared it and overnight because of those rewards they just skyrocketed themselves from being like a little st small startup to like a huge giant corporation or i don't know that was like the explanation from annie news right they basically heard that the fames and fortunes of what a double dungeon can do and they're like shit you know i got a second kid on its way that's pretty much a death flag on itself but i'm gonna continue doing it to feed that kid it's like god damn ain't nobody gonna be feeding the kid if you're dead the portal closes but for some reason this dungeon has this massive door and this massive figure in this huge hallway this mm -hmm. creepy statue that's red flag one and red flag two immediately get the fuck out Plays a very large role in the continuity of the story don't worry i won't spoil any of that for you but you'll definitely not forget continuity of the story so the statue is actually really important not just for the intro but for the future as well okay okay yeah this great statue all right as all of the other smaller statues begin to come alive and these heroes or hunters quickly realize that the area that they're in is way higher level than it should be something about this portal is not right and now they're fighting for their lives the statues in this huge chamber begin to come alive and they're insanely powerful probably s rank or even higher that's, that's, they start to one sh you guys think that's a spoiler that's not really a spoiler i mean it's like a very mild spoiler. Now, if he told us exactly why the statue is important, sure. But him just saying, hey, the statue is important for later. Is that really a spoiler? I don't really think so. Shot and kill all of the hunters. And the rest who are trying to fight for their lives scream in complete terror. And that's pretty much the end of the first episode, leaving you on a cliffhanger. It that cliffhanger is fucking... I don't know how to feel about it. I felt like it was abruptly ended. I wanted a little bit more. But again, we as fans of solo leveling and we have like these expectations that it'll be a godlike series, we'll continue watching it no matter what. But I'm just saying for like the normies, the fucking casual masses and the fucking manhwa and the webtoon elitists that are just trying to pick nitpick on anything that the anime was doing wrong. I do understand the criticism why they said that episode one was a little bit, you know, lackluster and not really the hook that they were expecting. Because again, I believe the hook will be tomorrow's episodes, episode two was really not that long of a first episode but boy did they do it justice i really after seeing the trailers did not expect much from this series but i was pleasantly surprised the dude this is like the fourth time he's shown this same fucking clip and this is from a 3.72 million uh subscriber channel by the way this guy knows what he's up this is the reason why he almost has 4 million subs guys think about it engagement keep the people engaged show the gad on screen the creator, unfortunately of solo leveling has passed away and i believe it was partly due to overwork the oh wait 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 wait, 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 wait wait but boy did they do it justice i really after seeing the trailers did not expect much from this series but i was pleasantly surprised yeah the creator, and then unfortunately of solo leveling has passed away what he did and i believe it was partly due to overwork the cha <laughs> classic i think there's a huge um I don't know if this is a pattern of behavior, but I'm pretty sure every once in a while I hear like Korean webtoon artists or, you know, not, not writers, authors, they all get like health issues and they have to take long hiatuses. And it's just a mix of, you know, shitty work culture, ridiculous work hours, lack of good diet and proper exercise and all these different things that causes people to pass away so early. God damn, they already died though? The artist, not the author. That still sucks though, right? Chapters of the manhwa were coming out like every- The close assistant finished the story? Huh. Damn. That man, and he couldn't even see his work being shown on the screen? That sucks, right? Imagine- oh, That's such a sad thing. To never get to see, like, your work finally being animated on screen like that. It is what it is, I guess. Every week or two, and they were these super long, super beautiful colored chapters. If you haven't read Solo Leveling, if you're an anime only, I suggest you give reading Solo Leveling a try because I just fell in love with the manhwa so quickly, especially when you get about a third of the way through the series, it really starts to pop off big time. My recommendation okay. is to give this series a chance. Even if you don't like reading manga, if you just want to watch the anime, check this out. It I mean, I can't. 
this is a curse of being a fucking YouTube reactor, right? I can no longer read manga. I can never check out the light novel stuff like that. But I guess if it's already stuff that we've seen from the anime, we could maybe cover that content. It has potential to be anime of the year. And I'm so surprised with how well Studio A1 Pictures has done with this. This first episode was incredibly clean in all aspects. Hopefully they can keep up the entirety of the series in this quality, but I assume they probably did. The next episode is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. And then about halfway through season one, it's going to start getting really, really good. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys because solo leveling is an adventure. There's something miraculous about this story in that if you've ever been a fan of anything RPG related, if you play Dungeons and Dragons or you just love power fantasy in general, that's us, right? Power fantasy, Isekai mains, rise up. Placing yourself in the shoes of the main character, Sung, becomes exhilarating. You feel yourself become this character. Zero to he hero. Grows, you grow with him as the audience member. But there's plenty of twists and turns in this story. Tons of mysteries to be revealed. And if you've never read or heard of solo leveling, boy, are you in for a roller coaster. But most of all, what this series does best is the sheer excitement of seeing the character of Sung grow. Almost every chapter has a battle. There's not really any slow moments in the series. It's continual fun and progression with every chapter and episode. And you'll see that as this series progresses. The series is scheduled to have 24 episodes. In but the first season is only like 12, right? Here's that chapter one and episode one went hand in hand. So 24 episodes, we will begin to see some of the more exciting parts of this series. But well, that's good to hear. At least season one has some of the more fun content, even though it's like the early game. But it is slated for 12 episodes this current, like the next three months, right? And then I believe we're going to have like a split core, right? Where the rest, the other 12 episodes will be shown maybe a couple months down the road. That's what I'm assuming. But we'll have to get to about episode 10 for you to truly understand where this series is going. <laughs> Fifth time with the GAD, but I, really, we're gonna have to wait till episode 10 for us to truly understand where the series is going? I'm sure the episodes in between are just gonna be fun. But if there's ever an anime where you have to say, like, just trust me, bro, it gets better at episode 572, it's like... I feel like you're, you could be doing something better with your time. Going Because you may see Sung now and think, oh great, another anime with just some weakling, but boy, you have no idea what's coming. In one respect, it is similar to One Punch Man with the different ranked heroes. But in another respect, it's the opposite of One Punch Man, which really focuses a lot on the s rank heroes and their backstories. Instead, this anime or this story of solo leveling Everybody focuses more on the main character than anyone else. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's well. That's one of the interesting things because, like, One Punch Man and show. Like, I compare One Punch Man and Eminence and Shadow to be very similar because if you look at the overall structure of it, Shadow and Saitama are like perfect ultimate beings that can defeat anything pretty much effortlessly. But if you always have the main character come in and just save the day immediately, it's kind of boring. So you have to focus on fleshing out everyone else around them. So that you're immersed into the story, so that when they fight an enemy that you know that the main characters can beat instantly, because you're immersed and in the perspective of the side supporting characters, you feel the threat, the imminent threat. You know that Shadow or Saitama can show up at the end and just end it, but because the side characters are so well fleshed out, you get to still feel the threat and it's not, you know, boring. But I guess this show it still focuses on Sung Jin Mu's, you know, progress into becoming this ultimate being. Now, what's going to be very interesting is I'm sure there's a point, and this is common in many power scaling animes, where in the beginning, it's a bit easy to maintain. But as he gets stronger and stronger, there comes a point where it's like people can no longer kind of like see him as a weakling. People can no longer like it, it's hard to make him be the underdog. When he gets so strong, are we going to just have him still be the focus of the story? Or are we going to have a bunch of other people and then do this formula of, oh, Sung Jin Mu then shows up at the very end to save the day? I would like something like that, too. And while it does embellish on some of the other characters, you can't help but root for the main character in every one of his battles. Episode 1 was delightful. I would literally give it a 10 out of 10. I have zero criticisms. Six time. Holy shit, dude. You guys have to watch this show, and hopefully this video performs well because I would really like to review this on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. I love solo leveling. It's a fantastic, fun story that I highly encourage you to get into. I'm Mastar. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a thumbs up and comment. Y'all know what to do. This guy's channel is Master, and before on my first channel when I covered One Punch Man manga content, he was the one of the channels that I shared an audience with for some reason. 
he is, I believe, trying to, you know, um, reach out to a separate niche, right? Because he focuses specifically on One Punch Man, but now he's trying to do solo leveling. So I'm sure with your guys' help that we can help a small creator like Masta reach 4 million subscribers with solo leveling. So please, guys, give him a like, subscribe to his channel. I'll be looking forward to reacting to many more of his videos.